Hey everybody, what's happening? Uh, in this video, what we are going to be taking a look at is essentially a second part of our voltage drop calculation videos. Uh, in a previous video, what we looked at was determining how far we could go with a given conductor. Uh, in this video, what we're going to take a look at is given a predetermined length, what size conductor would be required to feed that load. So looking at this example here, uh, what we're going to do is go with a 63 amp load and notice that we're fed from a 208 volt panel uh, we're going to stick to we have 75 degree terminations in our panel and we're going to go with 90 degree terminations in our box here okay so the first thing we have to keep in mind is when we have differing termination temperatures we always have to look at 4-006 and if we are unsure of the terminating temperature or if we're given the terminating temperature, specifically in this case, we're given both the 75 degree and the 90 degree termination temperature, we're going to go with the lower of the two. So in this case, 4006 tells us that we're going to go with 75 degrees, right? We have 90 degree insulation temperature. That'll come into play later when we look at that distance correction factor that we looked at in the last video. Uh, we're going to apply it a little bit differently in this video, but let's get started on the question. So we have a 63 amp load, and in this question, what we're going to do, as I mentioned, we are going to determine what size would be required for a 62 meter distance. Okay, so the total distance between my overcurrent device all the way out is going to be 62 meters. So we need to determine what size conductor is going to be required to accommodate for the voltage drop in this situation. Okay, so we'll start with that formula that we built last time. Again, I like to start always with this formula. Um, and the way that we built it last time was we said that the total distance equals, and remember, when we're looking at table D3 for voltage drop, that's what we're using in this situation. Um, total distance is always equal to the D3 value multiplied by, and this is where we look at those factors that D3 is built off of, uh, we're going to look at, because since table D3 is built off of 120 volts at a 1% volt drop with two conductors, obviously anything that's different from that, we're going to have to apply a ratio. So in this case, we're going to say again, actual voltage divided by the 120 volts that D3 is based off of, multiplied by, we're going to say actual percent volt drop compared to 1% volt drop the table D3 is built off of. And for now, we're going to ignore the distance correction factor. That's going to come into play uh, towards the end of this calculation, but for now, we're going to ignore that. Okay. So these are all the values that D3 is built off of. Um, what we're going to need to do is essentially transpose this formula, because this will help determine what the total distance we're allowed with a given conductor is. And again, we're kind of reverse engineering it here. We want to find out basically how what size conductor is required for the distance given okay so in order to transpose this uh to do any simple trim what we want to isolate essentially is this d3 value right because that's going to lead us to the conductor size required so to isolate that d3 value all of these three are multiplied together what we're going to do is just simply divide out what we don't want right so divide out our actual voltage divided by 120 times actual percent volt drop divided by one percent volt drop right that cancels that that cancels that and anything we do to one side of the equation we have to do to the other side so what happens is now we end up with total distance divided by actual voltage divided by 120 times actual percent divided by one percent and that gives us our formula right there. That should calculate out the D3 value that we can use to cross-reference with the given load to determine what size conductor we're going to use. So let's substitute some values for variables here, and let's punch our new formula values in here. So our total distance we're looking at is 62 meters divided by our actual voltage of 208 volts compared to 120 times the maximum allowable percent volt drop in this case again remember this would all be considered the branch circuit right so we're allowed a maximum of three percent volt drop in that branch circuit so we're going to go three percent compared to the one percent table d3 is built off of now remember if you're going to punch this all in a calculator 
don't forget, you've got to put secondary or these primary brackets around that entire bottom equation. Otherwise, it's just going to take the 62 meters and divide it by the 208. And just make sure you get those brackets in there, follow sequence of operation. Uh, once we punch those in, we should be looking at around 11.923 meters. So based off the D3 values, we're looking for a number around 11.923. Now we know that we're using the 63 amp load. And if we go to table D3 at 63 amps and we go across, what we find is we have 9.9 .9 meters, which is too small, potentially. We're going to look at that in a second. And 12.5 meters. So that's the one we're going to focus on first. If we look at where this 12.5 meters lands in D3, and we just go straight up to where the conductors listed are, it tells me that that is a number three. Okay, so we end up with a number three. Now, don't take that to the, the supplier yet, because what we want to do now is see if we can even get away with just slightly smaller conductor, right? Because what we, what we know is for sure, like a 63 amp load, for example, a number three should be rated in 75 degree column, all the way up to around 100 amps, right? So we know we're not fully loading this conductor right off the bat. So maybe we can get away with one size smaller. So that's what we're going to do, right? We're going to check, check one size smaller, just to see if we can get away with using that one size smaller. Because anything that's going to save us a little bit of money in the end is good, right? So let's check that. This is the way that we're going to check that next size smaller conductor. Now, again, from table D3. The next size smaller conductor from a number three would be a number four aug. And according to D3, a number four aug based on the 63 amp load is good for 9.9 .9 meters, which the minimum that we need to be is 11.923. But remember, we have that distance correction factor that we can apply. We might be able to sneak a little bit more distance out of that 9.9 .9 .9 if we apply the distance correction factor. So. Whenever I'm applying the distance correction factor to figure out if I can use a smaller size conductor, uh, I'm going to go to that note three table at table D3. Specifically, what I'm using there, remember, is the insulation temperature, right? So disregarding the 75 degree termination and the 90 degree termination, I am only looking at the 90 degree insulation temperature. So note three table at 90 degrees, I'm not even going to look for percentages or anything. What I'm going to do first to determine whether I can even use this smaller conductor, I'm going to apply the largest distance correction factor from that entire row and see if it gets me anywhere near this 11.923. Because if it doesn't, there's no sense wasting my time trying to figure out if I can use a smaller size conductor. So if you look at note three, table three at 90 degrees, the largest is 1.08 right and that's if we had perfect circumstances that's the biggest that we can get right so if we take that 9.9 .9 and we multiply it by 1.08 what it actually gives me in that case is 10.692 meters so even given the biggest distance correction factor this number is smaller than what's required remember this is the minimum and if my corrected factor does not meet the minimum none of the numbers that i'm going to use there's no way that i can take that number four gauge with a distance correction factor to get long enough to feed that 63 amp load so in this case no we cannot go with the smaller size conductor in this case we know for sure that the number three gauge conductor is our winner okay so hopefully this has helped we'll see you next time